Welcome to this very special edition of Southern Spirit Television. We're here at the Evangeline Booth College in Atlanta, Georgia, and I am delighted to welcome our international leaders, General Andre Cox and Commissioner Sylvia Cox. Welcome, General and Commissioner Cox. General, please uh, share your personal witness of how you came to know the Lord as Savior. Well, I was brought up in a Salvation Army family. My parents uh, were Salvation Army officers. Uh, so I guess from a very young age, of course, I've uh, been brought up uh, in the Army. I'd seen my parents as Salvation Army officers. I knew it was uh, not always an e easy existence, although I have to say they were wonderful role models. Uh, but in my teenage years, I sort of felt you know, there's a great big wide world out there, a lot to be explored and a lot of things I want to do with my life. And um, so I, I think reluctantly, should we say, remained within the ranks of the army. I did progress into senior soldiership, even if I was perhaps struggling in my own personal faith and, uh, uh, you know, with what God wanted for, for my life. It was when I went to Switzerland and uh, found work in a Salvation Army institution. Just so happened that Sylvia's parents were in charge of that institution. But it was within uh, a meeting that was led by Commissioner Charles Payan. Basically, the message was about, you know, Christ did this for you. And I, I realized, yeah, it was for me. Uh, and that I needed to actually respond in a very personal way. So I have to say that immediately after that meeting, I thought, mm, Lord, I hope this doesn't mean officership. Uh, and uh, that was a, a journey that uh, came not so long after, actually, uh, when God actually did call me to be a, a, a Salvation Army officer. But uh, the pivotal moment, I think, was in that meeting, uh, Commissioner Charles Payon, his ministry. So we'll always be thankful to him for that. Let, let's, let's talk about the calling now. Maybe, Commissioner, you go first, as you've already kind of got into that road and then you can pick up from there. I was a child and uh, I was in a meeting and somebody was speaking about what they've done in uh, Congo and as they were talking suddenly I knew that one day I would be an officer. So I was still young. I, I can't remember exactly how old I was but I was young and on that meeting I knew that one day I will be officer and one day I will serve in Africa. And it was not difficult for me. I've accepted it, it was quite normal. I've seen my parents, they were officer, they were happy. But then I met my husband, future husband, who did not have a calling. And I had to choose in a way, and I choose my husband more than my calling. And uh, then I let him continue because God called him too, so <laughs> I thank the Lord for that. <laughs> so all I can say is guilty as charged. <laughs> uh, but ac actually, as I, as I said, after uh, accepting Christ as my personal savior, uh, it did cross my mind that uh, there could be something more and there was a hesitation in my own heart and, and life. And uh, it was as I was going out one evening with a friend to the cinema to see a James Bond movie, uh, that just before I went into the cinema, I had a very, very brief uh, fleeting vision of myself in Salvation Army officer uniform proclaiming the gospel in Africa. And there was no sound, no words were spoken, but in that instant I knew, one, that I was called to be a Salvation Army officer, that I would become a Salvation Army officer, and that at some point uh, I would serve in Africa. Uh, and that really knocked me for six uh, and it was a fleeting few seconds that literally changed the course of my life. And mine too because I really didn't think that he would become an officer, he made it very clear. So I was really uh, surprised <laughs> when one night he told me that God had called him. So you watch Bond films in a different light now? <laughs> oh, I still enjoy them. <laughs> what was the movie? It doesn't Look, I'm, I... It doesn't remember. Can you remember? <laughs> I, I'm not sure if it wasn't on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Okay. I've got a feeling it was the one that was actually filmed in Switzerland, but I... Mm. I that <laughs> detail... I'm getting old. I can't remember. 
<laughs> okay, Commissioner Cox. So how, how did you actually meet and decide that this was long term? Uh, it was not very difficult in a way because he came to work in the institution of my parents. So I met it there. That's where I met him when he came to work. And we had all our meal together because in those days my parents would eat with the employee. So apart from breakfast, we share meal, supper every, all the time. So we saw it, each other quite a lot. So and at the beginning, he was a real Englishman with a bit long hair, so it was a <laughs> Not too many secrets, do you? <laughs> there is a so, limit to what needs to But, uh, yeah, with time, and uh, I, for me, I knew it would be the right one. Really? So, quite quickly, we, we thought it was the right place, and when both of us, when the calling was confirmed, then definitely that put it right. Right, let's talk about the family now. You have three daughters, you have three granddaughters. Four, Four granddaughters. Four granddaughters. Oh, yeah. oh, tell us about this wonderful family of all girls. I really thank the Lord mm. for our family because I realized that there are many couples who want children and children just doesn't come. So I'm really blessed. We are really blessed with our three beautiful daughter. And uh, mm. they are serving the Lord they know the Lord, so that also is another grace coming from God. And we even have no, now three son-in-law, and that was a good thing for my husband oh. because now it's no more only women, he's got some men, so it was a good advantage. And it was fine till the grandchildren came. Right. <laughs> so we now, carried on the usual. <laughs> but uh, we love our granddaughter. Oh, yeah. We are very proud. And again, we thank the Lord because they're healthy, they're doing fine. So it's, everything is a grace of God. And we are so thankful for our family. And we rejoice every time we can mm. see them. General, we're coming up to the first anniversary of uh, your term of office. And I know it's been a very exciting year for, for you. Tell me your impressions of the Salvation Army as you've traveled, as, as you've been a, a general, especially in light of this 21st century. Well, uh, first of all, I think we, we had to get off to a flying start. Uh, there wasn't much of a transition from uh, the moment of the election. Um, and we wanted to honor, uh, of course, first and foremost, everything that was already in the calendar. Uh, and we've been able to do that, uh, but perhaps uh, as a start in, in the office it was uh, a bit more hectic than, than it would normally be. Uh, but having said that, it gave us an opportunity to get out very quickly uh, and to sense something of the temperature. And wherever we've gone, uh, it's been very heartening to see the, the wonderful progress the impact that the army still has in changing and transforming lives, not because of who we are, but through the power of the gospel message, through the presence of Christ. Uh, you know, there have been some pretty hard things as well in, in this 12 months, but I think it's a reality check. You know, uh, we rejoice in really miraculous stories of change and transformation. When we get it right, it's spectacularly right. Uh, when we get it wrong, it's devastatingly wrong, and we shouldn't minimize that, uh, and we cannot tolerate sin. God does not tolerate sin. You know, it's not all uh, easy, uh, but having said that, uh, I think overwhelmingly we see mm. just the positive aspect of transformation, and we've got to build on that. We want to make a difference in this world. That's what we were called to do, and that's what we've got to fight for. Uh, no matter what it takes. And uh, so I'd say an immensely positive uh, first year, uh, but as you can imagine, certainly not without its challenges. We really appreciate your positive support of social media mm. and all that that means in um, communicating the gospel and raising awareness of the army. Why is it so important to you? Well, first of all, uh, when, when you think about internet and all of the information that's out there, uh, there's a lot of useful stuff, but there's a lot of uh, really bad stuff out on the internet. And uh, 
therefore, I think it's a natural place where Christians should be and where we should be present, and it's an opportunity to witness. Uh, I think we're incredibly uh, privileged to be able to travel around and to see so many different cultural expressions and so many different expressions of the army. Uh, and I think that this is a wonderful opportunity also to be able to show the world real life stories in real time uh, that are taking place. I would say, however, that um, you know, it is a tool, it is an opportunity for us to connect, and it's important we do so. But I hope we don't use this to replace relationships because nothing replaces being able to look someone in the eye and to be able to shake someone's hands, to be able to say to someone how important they are. Uh, you, we can convey that uh, in, in many ways, uh, but we need, we need both. You know, it opens up, I think, windows for, for people who, who might not have the opportunity to see some of the things uh, that we do, so it is important. Commissioner Cox, as World President of Women's Ministries, can you share some of the evidence that you're seeing that women in the Salvation Army are still as effective and, and, and that ministry is still doing its job around the world? I can really assure you that the women ministry is still very effective. We just came back from one country and there we saw the, the army was touching trafficked women, but also with the gospel and sending them back. I came from a women's leaders conference that not so long ago, and there I could meet with the ladies, and I was really impressed with all the program we're doing. For the rural ladies, we've got literacy, we've got skills developing. We, there's so many programs, so we are reaching a lot of ladies. I think the army is part of our DNA to have a focus on women, and they are still in a lot of places the vulnerable, and they are the one we need to focus on because they also need the gospel, but they also need help mm. because often they are the least of the least and nothing. And when you read the newspaper and things like that, I'm so pleased that the Salvation Army do something for the women and will continue to do it, I can assure you, because really women, the focus on women is a very important part of what the Salvation Army is. General, could you share some of the current issues the Army is facing today worldwide? Well, I, I think some of the issues that we face uh, are issues that are well known. I mean, they've been with us for decades. Uh, I, I really think that we face in many parts of the world uh, severe challenges when it comes to social uh, and economic exclusion. We're seeing people who are insanely rich uh, and people who are insanely poor, and there's not much of a middle ground, or the middle ground certainly seems to, to be weakening in, in many parts of the world. It's a reality that we've seen in Africa. Uh, we've served there enough years, and uh, uh, by golly, you can see some people who are rich in Africa. Uh, but you see it also in all of our Western, our developed uh, world, and I think that's, that's uh, a cause for concern. The, the recent economic meltdown has pushed many of our core back into the front line. Uh, I know in the UK that we are seeing not only increasing, but perhaps concerning numbers of people who come to the army just to receive food parcels. Um, now, that is an incredible opportunity for the gospel message, uh, but it is a concern uh, that that is the reality people are facing. People are now driven uh, by consumerism, the desire to possess material things, uh, and that, I think, is uh, an inhibiting factor for the spread of the gospel message because that's what people are pursuing. Want a better life, want a better car, want the latest gadgets. Secularism, a lot of people love what we do, but uh, perhaps don't love the motivation that's behind us. And uh, I think we have to uh, take a very strong stand on that. We are who we are, and uh, we do what we do because of what we believe. And our faith, I think, is an important part uh, that needs to, to be re-emphasized. 
I think if we're honest, of course, as we go forward, the, the issues relating to lifestyle choices or lifestyle issues uh, pose a real challenge to our faith. Uh, and I think we need to be real and be authentic uh, in the way that we respond to that. Uh, there's been a whole debate recently uh, in, in many societies about um, the issue of same-sex marriage. And uh, those issues pose challenges to our, our personal faith uh, and our understanding of what marriage consists of, you know, the lifelong relationship and uh, devotion of one man to one woman. Having said that, uh, we have to realize and understand that we are imperfect people. We are a people to whom God has shown great grace. And uh, I think in some of our responses, we can be very judgmental and very hard on people. Um, and the gospel message is for the whosoever. And um, even if it challenges us, within the comfort of our own spiritual experience. Uh, you know, I think we've, we've got to listen and we've got to learn. Uh, we've got to learn how to reach out to people instead of pushing people away. Um, so those, I think, are some of, uh, some of the great challenges. Of course, as we've just recently seen in, in a visit to one part of the world, I mean, the reality of uh, exploitation mm -hmm. and human trafficking uh, is a huge issue and I think it's it goes beyond even what we can imagine and all of that is driven really because we're hoping for a better life a better existence of those issues that you've just mentioned which do you consider to be the most important right now for the Salvation Army I guess the issues of, of uh, enslavement sexual trafficking um, exploitation of people uh, as a response uh, from the army, I, I guess, is one of, the, one of the, the key issues, trying to get to the root causes of that. How can we help people? You know, William Booth was a pragmatist. Uh, yes, he was concerned about the eternal destiny of souls, but then he realized that he had to do something to bring something of heaven here to earth. Uh, and I guess that, that, that that's one of the, the challenges uh, that we face, um, perhaps one of the greatest challenges, because everything relates to this issue of poverty and exclusion. What can Salvationists pray for right now for your leadership and your ministry right at this moment? I think the main thing would be that uh, the Lord keeps our hearts tender. Uh, I've said at the moment my election, say it again, um, I've never had a feeling that I was called to be uh, something, you know, to rank or position. I was called to proclaim the gospel. Um, you know, we're real people. We're not perfect people. We are still works in progress uh, in our own spiritual journey. Um, so we don't want to be put on uh, any pedestal as far as that's concerned. We are but uh, servants of the Lord. We are but disciples. We still have the L plates on. We're learners. Um, so I, I think it's, it's keeping uh, that, that we, our hearts would always be tender, uh, that we would be real uh, in, in the things that we say and in the, th the things that we do. Um, being genuine, I think, is, mm -hmm. is that. And for, I think we need, people can pray that we listen to God's words and that when we speak, that we speak his message, that, uh, that it will be really full of his love and his power so that our life will really reflect his life. Mm. We also need protection in some of the places we go, it's not easy, and sometimes not only for us, but for the people with us. So protection is also something that mm. people can pray for us. Good health, we are thankful for the moment for the good health we have, but we don't take it for granted, and we thank the Lord for it. And, uh, so, and also the strength to mm. be able to do what is asked from us. But we are very thankful because of the people praying for us because 
it does give us the strength mm. to do what we have to do. So well, and we sense you. we and sense we that sense. people are praying yeah. around the world, but I, I, I think also for courage and wisdom. Yeah. You know, some of the decisions we have to make mm. are far bigger than than we are. Um, so it's discerning what is God's will, but then having the courage and the strength and the wisdom to make the right decisions because we realize that decisions that are made impact people's lives. Mm. Um, so That's, yeah, yeah that is, his will will be done. Yeah, <laughs> and not it's our not our army, army. It's, it's his, his army. Uh, and we want to reflect that. Well, thank you both for being part of this program today. We really appreciate the time. And uh, we wish you God's blessing you. as you continue to travel and lead, that you will continue in good health mm. and you will be protected mm. and you'll see the love of the Lord in everyone that you meet. Mm. Um, God bless the Salvation Thank Army. You. Thank you. Well, Father, I just want to thank you this morning that uh, you've called us uh, into your service, that you've called us into this army. We have a tremendous sense of uh, privilege, but also responsibility. Uh, we want to reflect and know your will. We want to build your kingdom. It's not about us. It's all about you. And we want to thank you for the way in which you have called salvationists all around the world to live in covenant with you. You've called us into a relationship with you. Uh, but Father, we realize more than ever in uh, a fleeting and changing world how important relationships are. And so I just pray for myself, but I pray for salvationists all around the world that you'll keep us real, that you'll keep our relationship with you the main thing in all that we do. We don't want to be a people who seek to protect uh, the reputation of the army. We want to be people who do your will and do the right thing. And we know that you will take care of the army. So I pray that you'll bless the army all around the world today, that you will inspire us, that you will lead us, that you will fill us with your spirit so that your name will be glorified. Amen.